Hi, everybody. Oh, wait, the camera's right here. That's the time. <laughs> I feel like making love <laughs> to you. <laughs> green juice this morning yay it feels like a green juice kind of day yeah. so this is one of our green juices uh, favorite green juices this is from um whole foods uh, mm -hmm. uh, eyelash? Yeah, make a wish make a wish jeez on pc waste the eyelash okay ready mm -hmm. one, two. hi everybody welcome to our sit and sip anniversary edition uh you guys happy anniversary happy baby. anniversary four years four years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we wanted to answer some of the questions that you guys asked us as a couple and then we're gonna do some flash questions for you guys so here we go three things we both have in common so three between us or three mm -hmm. okay we both love the Simpsons that's true well, oh we both love oldies music and we both love food everybody love food but we love food. <laughs> Um, best marriage advice we were ever given? Communication is mm. key. And what would you say is the biggest thing about communication, right? Because like when you say communication sure. is key, like is it just like talking and listening? Is it, is it often communication? Or what would you say, what would you say, and let me say it like this, what would you say makes good communication excellent communication? I think that it's about clarity. When you, when you, are, when you have, when you guys are able to, like for us, when we're able, for me, when we're able to create a circumstance where we can be clear, we can be specific, we can feel heard, mm -hmm. um, it just, it just builds the trust. I, I say communication between, you know, the two people, but it's also the understanding of of what it is that you want from you know and again that's commun maybe communication with yourself in terms of clarity when to when to hear when to be quiet when to let things go you know that's what I a mean good one. really it's a big umbrella you know what I mean and and it it varies in my opinion from person to person relationship to relationship but for us I think it's a lot of it has been clarity and feeling heard that's really good I think in addition to that too. It's understanding everybody's own communication culture. Trey is the oldest of four, you know what I mean? And so he lived in a household, they grew up with as a household of six, but you know, two cousins, but having all of those different personalities yeah. in the household. And so it's like, you can't really say whatever you want to say whenever you want to say it, right? Yeah. It, gauging, gauging is key, um, paying attention to how somebody else represents themselves expresses themselves and trying to you know leave space for that and with there being so many people you just i think you pick up on you know the how can i how can we best come to a conclusion that will give us peace there's too many of us to be fighting you know what i mean mm -hmm. um not being as confrontational trying to be as understanding as possible knowing that there were so many different personalities so many people needed so many different things you know, in, in our life, in our upbringing, so many things were happening because there were a lot of people. So mm -hmm. it just needed that much more grace and compassion. Compassion was a really big thing in my house that maybe a part of the idea of what compassion was or what it was supposed to look like was a listening ear and a bit of compliance. Mm. My communicative culture, it was a very small household, just me, my mom, my sister, and then my mother, is deaf and so the deaf culture is just very already it's a very physical type of communication where everything is external so instead of instead of keeping things in everything was expressed on an external realm and then i think also too we just grew up with a a, a, a communication of just cutting each other off that's just what we did you know <laughs> like, well, we would talk and then we would cut her off and we would cut us off and you guys were oh no there was, it, but, you but interject. It, wasn't, it was more like yeah, an interjection yeah, than yeah, it was, a cutting off like it wasn't the intention to, yeah but it right. wasn't your intention to like silence no i'm speaking <laughs> right? you know what no, i mean like exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't see that as disrespectful though yeah. You know what I mean? We didn't see that as, you know, it was just like we were very passionate and we would all just kind of, you know, have one big conversation. You were with building the, the conversation. Every, mm -hmm. It was like one big conversation is what it sounds like. And as you as you jumped in and she jumped in and she jumped in, it was still the same, you know, still the same conversation. It wasn't like somebody was trying to take the ball and run in a different direction. Precisely. I realized that 
you came from a culture where you had to gauge what you said, how you said it. We came from a culture where it's like, just assume that we all love and we care about each other and we get to say whatever we want to say. Yep. And so it's about learning just that delicate ba balance between, you know, how to communicate to each other where the other person, as you said, feels mm -hmm. understood and where you are feeling like clear and what mm -hmm. it is that you're saying. Sure. How, this is a good question. How do we make our marriage work in the industry? I, I guess we make our marriage work in this, in the industry in, in the same way that anybody would make their marriage work. I mean, you, I, we're able to put our, our job requires a lot of long hours, sometimes, um, long distance, but you know, we're, we're in it to win it. We, we um we do the work we make the you know whether it's writing you know letters sending care packages staying on the phone checking voice in notes voice or notes video, video notes. exactly you yeah. were shooting you were shooting the 24th and i was in ireland doing a play yeah. and i was away for like two months and because we were on such different time zones we just did video notes so i would record a video mm -hmm. note and tell you about my day yeah. and then i would send it to you and then you'd be able to watch it in your own time and then you sent me a video note mm -hmm. and so that was nice because it was almost like we were talking to each other on yeah. the phone every single day yeah. when we're not working we're constantly checking in i think we both we both look at it in the same exact way like there are people that you can date that are of the same profession and you just don't look at the profession the same way right but i think for us you know, after having gone to school and after like studying this for a very long time, I feel like we both look at the demands of the job similarly. We're used to it so, ourselves. Yeah, and we're it, used and, to it. And that's yeah. that level of um, of of empathy, I guess. You know, we we we're not we, because we do it. We're understanding of what the requirements can be. We're always grateful for an early night. Yeah. But you know, with each other, but it might not be that way and it's not like something that we're harboring on or, or you know what I mean frustrated about because you know when the shoe is often on the other foot and we you know we experience it ourselves another thing too sorry you're gonna say no, something no, else no, no 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 I was gonna say another no. thing too is that um you know like in a relationship you give 50 50 right well there are some times in a marriage where you know, you have to give, you give 80 because the other person can only give 20, you know, for that period of time. Like, for example, if you are working like 14 hour days, you know, five days straight, I know you're exhausted. I know that you're spent. Sure. I know that you're emotionally like, you know, kind of like, whew. And so I don't mind, you know, showing up more that week for you to make sure that, you know, you're feeling replenished as best as possible. And then you do the same for me in return. I think that it can be more difficult when we're both exhausted. And so in times like that, we just climb into bed, order a pizza. <laughs> fall asleep <laughs> I mean? in each other's oh, arms, yeah, yeah. watching The Simpsons. Exactly. So I guess the follow-up question is, how do we separate work from marriage? You know, say I'm doing a scene with a with a woman or whatever, you know, I, I don't, it's, it's almost like, it's like Trey's not there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and I think a part of that is my training, part of that is just my mentality. Though it's my vessel, it's not my mind, it's not my words, it's not mm. my character. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a character that I've devoted my vessel to. With you, I know you have to do the same things, I know you'll have to continue to do the same things. And a part of the, that work sometimes includes Kissing a co-star, you know, for the sake of the journey of the character to express what your character wants, whether it's Anika, whether it's Quinn, whether it's, you know what I mean, all, you know, they, they deserve the space to be as real as possible. And I think that, you know, when we are able to give over to what those characters deserve without thinking, what's Trey going to think or what's Grace right. going to think, you know, we're actually creating something that is pure, that is beautiful, and that will do what we set out to do, touch people, mm. bless people, give them somebody that they can see, you know, um, that, that looks like themselves or make them think about themselves, whether it's a good situation or not so good situation. If every actor who was married or, you know, in a relationship wouldn't go to that particular place to showcase love, we wouldn't have the beautiful performances we have, you know, to this day that, you know, people go and see on date night or whatnot. I think trust is a big part of it too. I think that when you, you know, I, like I'm not gonna lie, like I feel like our relationship is, you know, the relationship 
out of all the relationships that I've had in my life where I have the most trust, you know, in our relationship. Like, and that's something that you and I developed together, like yeah. our culture of trust. Like I trust you more than I trust anybody in this world. And I think that's very important. I trust you, baby. Thanks, baby. Yeah. And I think that's very important because, you know, we have that trust and we continuously work on that trust and we continuously do whatever we can to not abuse that. Sure. So when you are doing love scenes or, you know, and I'm watching these love scenes, I'm actually like, you know, all of that goes out of the door and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking, cause I have dated people before who have been in the industry that we didn't have that trust. Mm -hmm. And when I saw them, you know, have, you know, these love scenes or interests, there would be a small part of me that would be like, should I be worried? Mm. Right. But I realize now that it was because of the lack of that trust that we had built in our foundation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having that with you, you know, I, I, we instantly go into work mode and this goes with whether or not we are, you know, doing love scenes individually, whether or not we're doing scenes where we're fighting or we're being physically, you know, like aggressive with the, one another because our characters call for it. You know, we are able to kind of snap into that training state of mind. It's all like about like, I need you to go there. You know, I need you mm. to <laughs> like for me, cause I'm like, it needs to look believable, you know? It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be weird if you're over there holding back because people can tell. And if, unless that's the truth about the character, you know, you should be able to have the freedom and the safety um, to be able to do that. And also like, I trust you, you trust me. So we know that it's about the work. And we it's know not gonna it's bleed over into anything the else. The training, yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself, sweetheart. I mean, so. I, I, yeah, trust, mm -hmm. trust, trust and responsibility. There are some things I won't do. You know, in, yeah. in, in, in the role. There, you know, like what? Name one thing. That's 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 my own stuff. Go ahead, go ahead. Mm. There's some things you won't do. But you know, um, that's not one of them. And and between you and I, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That that's something that we um, trust each other with and we don't we don't feel threatened, we don't feel I mean because if you if you said came to me and said, Trey, you know, I, I know you take your work seriously, but if you know, you kiss this woman, it makes me feel some kind of way. I I then have to do something about that because you're my wife. You come first. You're my, you know, after God, it's you. Mm -hmm. And, and that means something to me. And then I would be, I mean, I would feel like find a compromise. I would feel, I would want to find a compromise, but I would put, I would, I have to put you first. I want to put you first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you first. And if that's the case, then I have to reevaluate some of the things that I'm doing. But, but that's not the case in our relationship because of because of the trust, because of the understanding, because of the training, because of you know the fact that we're avid movie watchers and we're always asking questions through the process and we're wondering like what was that? You're an empath. Like what what is what does this feel like? What is it? You know what I mean? What what what? I wonder what that felt like. What they're with this person's you know, relationship or, or did they take this role home with them or all this stuff, you know? Right. And because we can have those responsible conversations in our communication, um, we're able to really, you know, to lay down, you know, clearly defined lines of what it is that we're okay with and what it is that we're not. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, no, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how do you cope in quarantine as a couple? I'm having a bop. I get to see this pretty girl all day long. My hair is growing. I had a haircut. And I'm like, ugh. We just, I'm having a, I'm, I'm as sad as this time is, as frustrating as this time is because of what's happening in the world. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I'm trying to look at the, the positive and I have to say that, you know, one thing that keeps me positive is that I get to look at you and, and be reminded of family you know, be reminded of, of a beautiful past that we share, a beautiful present that we have, and a beautiful future that's to come. And we are, you know, as we progress in, in, in our lives in this moment, while things are, you know, standing still, we get the opportunity to work on communication. We get the opportunity mm -hmm. to, you know, really give each other time that we might not otherwise because we're so busy. We get the chance to you know, champion one another and cook with one another for one another. I, I also think that a, a big part of what's helping us quarantine together too is welcoming time apart, right? Taking turns being, <laughs> being yep. in different places because I think when you're home all day, you know, and you're in the ro same room all day, 
you know, irritation can absolutely occur. Basically, so, too much tray is not a good thing, I guess. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> say what you're saying. <laughs> Listen, to. <laughs> So much of either one of us. I think just welcoming that time apart is is useful as well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so it's about having no qualms about that. Um, mum, 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 mum. Flash, flash. You ready? Who is the better cook? Who's the most annoying during the quarantine? <laughs> like, <laughs> You're the most annoying. Yeah. Why? That's tough. <laughs> I get stuck on a song. I'll sing it for days. Yes, you will. I was laughing at something yesterday. Like anything would make me laugh at this point because I'm so like star. <laughs> delirious. Like, I feel delirious. <laughs> Who's the better driver? Yeah, for sure. Who is the most stubborn? <laughs> Who is the most patient? Who's the loudest? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most romantic? Who's the funniest? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't laughing. know. Yeah. You're pretty. Hey, babe. <laughs> See? Who said I love you first? You said I love you first. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. you did. Did I? Yeah. When? You don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> when did we say I love you? I think we said it. Um, Fairly fast. Yeah, yeah. I think we said it when we when we became um, official. That's what I was thinking. Like, I did not say it first. Maybe I, I said say it first. first. You said it first. You you would say it first. <laughs> I'm the romantic. Okay, who's the most likely to be running late? Who's first to say I'm sorry? Actually, uh -uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you boy. <laughs> um, okay, someone asked, can you both sing something for the fans? Sing. <laughs> Why is it so funny to me? What? <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna sing. That's what I'm saying. Let's just sing happy birthday. Keep on loving me, baby. <laughs> Why don't you let me do the baby? And you come in. Okay. Do it pretty loud. We say, baby. baby. Here we go. Give me pretty loving, baby. Give me pretty loving, honey. Keep saying, darling. Keep on loving me, baby. Oh, you know I need you, honey. You know I need you, baby. Keep on loving me, baby. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Grace Byers. And please stay tuned because we have so much more things coming for you. I know that you're going to love it. I'll see you soon. Bye.